My name is Mojtaba, and this is a joint work with my collaborators at NJIT. The motivating example for this work is surveillance for hire, with the goal of attacking a high-profile target. In surveillance for hire, an unscrupulous organization wants to install the Pegasus insta uh, spyware on the device of a high-profile target like Jamal Khashoggi uh, in order to control the target's device. For this, the victim is lured to a website controlled by the attacker. The attacker has acquired at a great expense a zero-day exploit and could use this exploit to infect all users who visit the website. However, uh, this has the drawback that the zero-day exploit will be discovered by, quickly by uh, white hat hackers like the Citizen Lab. Instead, the attacker adopts a better strategy, only deploy the zero-day exploit uh, when a high-profile target visits the website. This would work only uh, if the attacker has a reliable way to tell when the high-profile target visits the website. This is where our work comes into the picture. We introduce a target dynamization attack that allows an attacker who controls a website to learn if a unique individual is visiting the website. The attacker has, uh, knows this individual only through a public identifier, such as an email address or Twitter handle. The attack consists of two phases. In the setup phase, the attacker uploads the resource in a sharing website and shares this resource privately with the victim and embeds this resource in an attacker-controlled web page. In the execution phase, uh, the attacker lures the victim to visit the website. Then when browsing, browsing this page, uh, the victim's browser makes a request to the sharing service, passing users authentication cookies, and then the sharing service responds based on the credentials. This response contains the shared resource if the user is the target and an, or otherwise. Normally, the outcome of loading the resource cannot be learned by the attacker website, because of isolation technologies, such as uh, same origin policy, same site cookies, X-frame options header, or cross-origin open air policy. However, it has been shown that the attacker can bypass these technologies by cross-site leaks, which basically are software bugs in web browsers. Website uh, owners are slowly but surely patching these cross-site leaks. In this work, we do not assume the existence of a cross-site leak. Instead, we use a browser-based CPU cache side channel so the attacker is able to learn if the resource has been loaded or not. The attack page uses JavaScript to measure the contention to the CPU cache. Depending on whether the resource is being loaded or not, the contention to access the CPU cache will be different and will produce distinct patterns. So the attack exploits the CPU cache side channel on the target's device and can bypass isolation technologies and various defenses deployed by browser vendors and website owners. A side channel is a mechanism to learn usually private information indirectly by analyzing the use of a shared resource. Side channel attacks are attacks that analyze the physical implementation artifacts of a system in order to gain an insight into its secret internal state. In our setting, we use microarchitectural cache attacks, which allow a spy process to observe the memory access patterns of a victim process and use the access patterns to discover secrets about the victim. We use three different methods to embed the shared resource in the attack page. The first method is the iframe-based approach. We, use, we start measuring the cache contention 
And then we basically create an iframe element in the attack page to embed the shared resource while measuring the CPU cache access patterns. This method is very effective in several browsers. However, it has some limitations where it is not possible to embed the resource cross-site through an iframe, such as same-site cookie attributes or X-frame options. For that. Second method is pop under. In this method, again, you start measuring the cache access patterns, and upon the user click, the attack page opens the shared resource in the pop-up page, which bypasses the limitations of the iframe-based approach. Also, to make the attack more responsive, after opening the new window, the focus is returned back to the initial window, so the user doesn't notice it. We were able to find a pop under trick in Safari browser. In other browsers, we use the third method, which is called tab under. In tab under approach, upon user click, a new tab is opened, which has the focus, and then the initial tab in the background navigates to, the, uh, to load the shared resource, while the tab in focus starts measuring the access, cache access patterns. So we use three different methods, iframe-based, uh, pop-under-based, and tab-under-based approaches for the attacks. We were able to successfully perform the anonymization on multiple operating systems, web browsers, and sharing services. You can read the paper for more details. In addition to introducing the CPU cache side channel-based attack, as another novelty of the paper, we successfully execute the attack on browsers that have a strict policy of not allowing cookies to be attached to cross site requests, including Safari and Tor browser. We also increase the attack's target population by applying it to highly popular services which have no currently exploited cross-site leaks, including Gmail, Twitter, Facebook, and others. The attack was successful in the settings with the attack accuracy ranging between 84.5% to 100%, uh, and taking less than three seconds in most cases, and up to 10 seconds uh, when using Tor browser. Okay, we've seen the attacks. What can we do about it? We also propose the defense for these attacks. This figure shows the normal behavior in the browser without our defense. The cross-site request is made with cookies and the response is rendered in the browser. Our defense, Liquidator Plus, is a browser extension which sits between the browser and any website that are visited. This is already publicly available and can be installed in Chrome and Firefox uh, browsers. Can be accessed from the source. It is an improvement on a prior work, prior work called Liquidator, and basically intercepts all HTTP requests and looks specifically at requests made cross-site to embed other resources. As can be seen in the figure, it strips cookies from the cross-site request and sends the response back to the page. But we need cookies for some legitimate functionality, such as tracking and analytics. So the extension makes the second request identical to the first request, uh, this time with cookies. However, the second response is not rendered in the browser. Then the extension compares the two responses, the first response and the second response. And if there is something different in two responses, uh, it means that the response relies on cookies, uh, which makes it prone to target the anonymization attacks. At this time, the extension notifies the user and let the user decide what to do about it. Here are some challenges we encountered when developing this solution. Pop-unders and tab-unders were new variants of the attack we introduced, so we extended the defense to protect against these methods. The defense specifically keeps track of relations between tabs and windows to check which one was opened by which other tab or window. 
We noticed that there were some residual side channels remain despite the, despite having this extension installed. For example, the response time for the second request is different depending on the cookies. We added a, a small random delay to resolve this issue. The second request also allows to maintain web functionality such as tracking and analytics. Also, we, the initial version of the extension was only supported in Chromium-based browsers. We added support for Firefox and Tor as well. After making this improvement, the attack accuracy with the defense enabled dropped to 50%, which is basically equivalent to tossing a coin. So, in summary, we introduced the novel idea of using CPU cache side channel instead of cross side leaks for targeted deambulation attacks. We also increased the attack's target population by applying it on popular websites and more restrictive web browsers, which was not possible before. On the defense side, we introduced the Liquidator Plus protecting against these deambulation attacks. Scan the QR code and download it now and install it on your browser. In addition, our artifacts were evaluated by Usenix Artifact Evaluation Committee and received all the badges. It is available, it is functional, and results were reproduced. You can access it in GitHub. We also perform responsible disclosure to browser vendors and affected services. In the paper, we also provide guidance to all affected parties on how to mitigate the attacks. We also, we are actively working with browser vendors to deploy defenses against these attacks. Thanks for your attention, and I'm ready for your questions.